This is From One Squirrel to Another by me. I wrote this. I love living in the big city amidst burnished behemoths, dancing with fuming dragons on the paved jungle floor. Mother doesn't play favorites. I love the stars they tacked onto their heaving smokestacks that flavors our air with progress. I peer from the perch of my tree home and see mother mulling about her gridded garden, planting white and blue seeds, showering them with her blood. I love the gifts they leave us in echoing caverns, morsels discarded from their dens, graciously hidden under lids and in blackberries. But the scraps always smell like us, the savory aroma of prey, just as mother intended. My inspiration for this poem was last week's poem, Romanticism 101 by Dean Young. And if you remember, that poem challenged many of the main tenets of Romanticism by portraying the world um, as a series of uncaring, mechanical, inescapable systems and aliens who were disguised as orthodontists. However, in this poem, I wanted to fully embrace romanticism by employing its optimistic worldview and its love of, of nature. I wrote this in the persona of a squirrel who lives in a tree located in a big city, and he doesn't really understand technology, so he views the buildings and the cars as behemoths and dragons, and he thinks that the, the lights that are on the smokestacks in the distance are stars that humans captured and are using for decoration. Line, fi line five is the first mention of mother who represents mother nature. And mother doesn't play favorites, um, conveys the impartial and oftentimes harsh reality of nature. And in line 10, the city landscape is portrayed as a garden that Mother Nature works in. And this is an interesting metaphor because it suggests that innovation and modern industrialization are all as a result of the will of nature. And a couple lines down, the color symbolism of the white and blue seeds showered in nature's blood is a reference to the red, white, and blue of the American flag. And it's here that I try to argue that even though, as I claimed earlier, nature is prompting the innovation and the expansion of industry and the advancement of civilization, it all comes at a cost of nature's life and well-being. And the last seven lines really illustrate the main argument, or one of the main arguments of the poem. The squirrel talks about how he loves the food that he scavenges for in the trash. And he also sees the trash cans and the trash bags as natural occurrences. He mentions that the, that the trash cans are like echoing caverns, and he finds food in blackberries, which refers to the trash bags. But the squirrel understands that the food that he's finding smells like him, which is a ref which refers to the animals that were killed and used to make the food that he was eating. The last line affirms that this predator-prey relationship was all part of nature, or Mother Nature's plan. And this is one of the main points that I want to explore in this poem, that nature is just a web of food chains where those in positions of power oftentimes take advantage of those who are less powerful than them. And this is seen all throughout the animal kingdom and even the social structures that we live in today. 
the rich and powerful live lives of luxury and they thrive while the poor and disadvantaged are disenfranchised and used for cheap labor. While this poem did take a more natural and organic outlook of the world than Romanticism 101, it still carries that bleak and pessimistic um, tone and and it sends that same message that the injustices that we see committed by those in positions of power are ultimately inevitable while those structures still exist because it's simply the course of nature. Thank you for watching.